Hey there, this is Andrew bringing you another Keyforge deck reveal and review. This is going to be another Dark Tidings deck. And this one shall be called Tarpatio the Trapper of Treason. That's great alliteration. Uh, great alliteration. Uh, Tartatio, the Trapper of Treason. I love that. I'm definitely expecting Shadows Untamed maybe Unfathomable. Oh, we got Untamed, but then Sarian and Sanctum. I wonder if Treason is associated with Sanctum. Oh, maybe maybe with um. Maybe with Saurian, because you have Beware the Ides and Six Emperor Tyrannosaurus. Yeah. Okay. So, hoping for a lot of Amber. Board control, Amber control. Grey Augur is a three-power human monk with one armor. Gives its neighbors fight, gain one. Bulwark is a four-power mutant knight with one armor and assault two, and it gives its neighbors assault two. Two of those. Wow. I like it. And then Hammergram is an action that deals three damage to a creature and stuns it. So already good board control shaping up here. Heal or Harm is an action. When you play it, you choose one. You either fully heal a creature and gain one or ready and fight with a friendly creature. Um, I mean, imagine you have, you know, you put out the Grey Augur, the two bulwarks and then you heal or harm to fight with this bulwark right you're going to deal assault four uh and then get a fight gain one although the fight gain one doesn't trigger if the assault kills the enemy creature so something to be aware of another healer harm very nice larry of the lake is a three power human knight while the tide is high each friendly creature gets plus two armor very nice uh yeah very nice for setting up the, that Persistent board control. Shifting Battlefield is an action with a bonus amber. When you play it, you move a friendly creature anywhere in your battle line, and that creature captures an amber. Um, it's a little board control. It's uh, not my favorite card, although once you have, if you have a big board out, it can it can suddenly be meaningful. Sir Bevor is a one power alien knight with five armor and taunt. Staunch knight is a four power human knight with two armor. And it gets plus two power while it's on a flank. Got two of those. Ooh, beefy. And then Taxing Journey is an action with a bonus amber. It says a friendly creature captures one. Each of its neighbors that shares a house with it also captures one. So that's potentially, you know, capture three, which can be really good. Um, but I will just say, all in all, we have four capture in here, which is not a lot. We do have a lot of beefy board control, right? So that's what we're getting out of Sanctum. A little bit of amber control, a lot of board control. On to Sarian. We have Skilla, who will come with Charybdis for sure. Skilla is a 7 power beast that gives every enemy creature reap deal 4 damage to this creature. So, very good board control. And Charybdis is also a 7 power beast and it gives enemy creatures before fight lose one. That's some good amber control and it, it also disincentivizes board control. Your opponent probably would rather not fight anyway, but this just makes it, okay, they can't. But if you have them both out, then they don't want to reap and they don't want to fight. So you're in a really good situation. Enlist New Mary. This is one of my favorite uh, new Saurian cards. It is an action with a bonus amber. When you play it, you take control of an enemy creature with amber on it. So that's a bummer, right? Because you're essentially uh, letting your opponent steal one by doing that, unless you have mitigation. But while the creature is under your control, it belongs to House Saurian um, instead of its original house. So, and it comes in ready. So, I mean, it's assuming it's ready on the opponent's side, right? You bring it over, it's ready. You don't exhaust it. So you immediately get to use this card as a Saurian creature. Um, so whatever your opponent's best creature is, boom, you get it and you get to use it. It's a, it's, that's a great effect. So you just have to pick something that is worth, you know, a, a steal and, uh, or, or know that you can mitigate this deal, but it's, yeah, it's a really great card. All right, Serarium is an artifact with a bonus amber. It's also a location. 
and it says that each creature with the lowest power cannot reap. We don't have a lot of low power creatures, so I think we're going to be okay. Sir Bevor, you know, maybe, but that's okay. Senator Quintina is a five power dinosaur politician. This is after a creature reaps exalted. That applies to you too, by the way, so you have to worry about that. Uh, but that could set up a good, like, enlist new Mary turn. And um, it just, again, it's more just disincentivizing the opponent from reaping. Although, if there's a little bit of anti synergy here, because if the opponent uh, reaps with like a two power creature, let's say, they, on their turn, they get to choose the order. So they can actually kill it before the Quintina fires. So that's a little, that's a little bit anti synergistic if your opponent knows what they're doing. Altruist Rostrum is an artifact and location. It has action, move an amber from a creature to another creature. So that actually could, could work out very well with the Enlist Numeri. You, uh, you can use this to put an amber on a creature so that you can take it, or once you've taken a creature, you can use this to uh, get rid of the amber that's on it. Decadence is an action. It, when you play it, you choose one. You either exalt ready and use a friendly creature, or you move an amber from a creature to another creature. Um, yeah, very nice effect there. And then, oh, we do have Medicus Lacus. So if we do have Amber piling up, starting to pile up from these reaps and whatnot, Medicus Lacus can turn it into a, you know, forging. You can spend that Amber, right? Uh, it's a five power dinosaur politician. It says, while the tide is high, you may spend Amber on friendly creatures as if it were in your pool. However, however, um, your opponent can always take the tide back on their turn. So it's a little hard to pull this off without some sort of uh, key cheat, but maybe we'll get a key frog. Who knows? I think we're past the point of getting an Imperial Forge. Maybe we'll get a key frog. Reach Advantage is an action with a bonus amber. It says, play if the tide is high, a friendly creature captures three, otherwise raise the tide. Uh, yeah, it's a nice card either way. Spoils a battle. Action with a bonus amber. When you play it, a friendly creature captures one, and then each creature with amber on it, that's yours and your opponent's, captures one from its opponent. Um, so more good ways to pull your opponent away from check, and if you have the Medicus Lacus out, to then threaten to, to per spend and delete the amber. Venator Altum is a seven-powered dinosaur soldier with two armor. After it's dealt damage, if the tide is low, you exalt it. So that is a little bit of a risk, but it is a huge creature and a big threat on the board along with just a lot of other huge board presence. So um, seems pretty good here. Your opponent's going to need to have a board wipe. They're probably going to need to have multiple board wipes to deal with this. Of course, that's the thing. Keyboards has text with multiple board wipes, so you got to look out. All right, let's see what we get in Untamed. Okay, this is Chenile. So this means that we're going to get the other, the next two stages of this. Um, this is like a Pokemon evolution or, uh, I mean, it's, it's basically Butterfree, right? Um, but you get these three cards together. I think they'll come up here. And um, when you play the, the, let's say the third or the biggest one, when you play the biggest one, it looks to destroy the second one. And if not, then it gets destroyed. Um, and same with the middle one. If you, when you play the middle one, it looks to destroy the, bottom the earliest one and if it can't then uh you destroy it however if you have all three in your hand you can just go boom 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 and play the play all three and you're good they also each have a way an action that returns the next one to your hand um so that's okay but playing for an amber isn't bad either so if you get the creature to sit on the board i mean if you can end up with an and each of these have this one has chanel has Hazardous, so that protects it. Bombix has six armor. And Fifalde is just a big creature. So you get a nine power creature here um, that has fight, reap, fully heal it, and gain an amber. That's pretty great. But even if you don't, you get these ambers out of it. It's, it's pretty fine. Okay, moving on. We have Beach Day. This is an action with a bonus amber. When you play it, you return a creature to its owner's hand. If the tide is high, you gain one. We talked about this before. If you... This can be used uh, against an enemy creature. It can also be used if you have a creature that will generate an amber. Uh, like maybe Fafalda, you played it, and you're like, eh, I don't really care about keeping it on the board. I just want to return it to my hand and get that amber pip again. It'll, it'll kill itself at that point. But uh, you, know, you can use it that way as well, or if we get like a deep water Gruen. 
Sporegorger is a four power beast and fungus. When it reaps, you give it a plus one power counter and you may remove each plus one power counter from it. And uh, if you do that, then for each counter removed that way, you deal a damage to each other creature. Um, yeah, that can be pretty cool if it fires. All right, into some amber ramping here. We have Chelonia. Chelonia is a two power beast and witch with elusive. And it says that after you play another creature, if the tide is high, gain an amber. So it's basically a hunting witch, but with elusive, which is amazing. Uh, but you have to have the tide high. But this, unlike Medicus Lacus, Medicus Lacus, the opponent has to leave the tide high for you to get the benefit. Chelonia, you can raise the tide and then get the benefit. So it's a, it's a pretty powerful card. And we have enough creatures in here that I think this is, if this stays on the board, it's going to really pay off. And there's that Deepwater Gruen, which again is a really good combo with Beach Day. Deepwater Gruen is a five power beast. It has two Amber Pips on it. When it when you play it or after it reefs, if the tide is low, your opponent gains one. Um, but if the tide's high then, or neutral, then you're fine. Um, so if, you, if the tide is high, you play this and then Beach Day and then this again, that's a six Amber combo in two cards, which is pretty good. Bloomph is a three power beast and cat with skirmish. When it fights, you give a beast creature two plus one power counters. That could go on the uh, Chelonia. That could go on the Spore Gorger. Uh, that could go on one of your insects. There's lots of good options. Infighting is an action. When you play it, each creature deals damage equal. Equal to its power to its right neighbor. Um, less good in a deck like this that really wants to just have a big board presence. In a pinch, maybe it works, but it's probably less good in this deck than in some others. It can fire the key frog though. We have the key frog. So there is a chance you get into a situation where you where what you want to do is raise that tide, play that key frog, and then in fighting. Oh, that's great. So yeah, that's real. Um cool. Two cards left here. We got Reap or Sow. Reap or Sow is an action when you play it. Either you ready and reap with a friendly creature, or you give three plus one power counters to creatures distributed as you choose. That can be a great way to protect that Chelonia. That could be really nice. Where is it? Yeah, there. That could be pretty good. And last card, we have Youngest Bear, who's a two power beast that says you may reap reap you may reap with one of your young with one of youngest bears neighbors so uh yeah there's a case you know maybe you get this down next to uh nobody else cares about reaping maybe you get this down next to another creature and you reap and you get two out of it that's that's okay but um maybe yeah that's a little silly um so youngest bear i don't think is great in this deck but a lot of these other creatures are really good. Um, and uh, and definitely the key frog is viable. And it's possible to uh, for to force the Medicus Lacus benefit with the key frog. I think what you're really what you don't want in this deck is um, a bunch of uh, it's for your opponent to have a bunch of board wipes. So if you can keep control of the board, keep your creatures on the board. This deck is going to do great. If your opponent is able to just keep wiping, it's going to be sad. Um, but you know, those are, I find these kind of decks very fun to play, and when you can pull off a combo like that, you're really happy. So again, this is Tartatio, the Trapper of Reason. Uh, I hope I, I definitely enjoyed going through it. I hope you enjoyed it as well, and I hope you'll get out and forge some keys.